Hi, my name is Steve Hughes, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how we can rig up and operate a piston with a spring, which you might use on a car or a vehicle. So we've got a chassis at the top, which is uh, moving up and down independently from a wheel, which is also moving up and down. Uh, we have a suspension here, or the wishbone, which is being driven as well. So a lot of controls going on. Let's have a quick look at what we have. Um, our object can't be selected. All that can be selected are two controls. We have one for the chassis, and the only option here is to translate this up and down, and one for the wheel. In this case, we have some rotation because the wheel would need to steer and also move up and down as it goes over the bumps. So if we bring up a move tool, we can find that we can move that, and we can find we can move our chassis as well. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start a new project, a new scene and I'm going to jump to a front view and we're going to start by building the piston. Let's bring up a cylinder. I'll press R to bring up the scale tool, scale this up, W to move tool and move that up and then Control D to duplicate. I'm going to scale this up slightly now, maybe down and then just move it into position. Okay, so the pistons need a, a quick name. I'm going to call this shaft 1 I'm going to call this shaft, if you call it shaft 1 as well, Maya will automatically change the name to shaft 2. Uh, we could do with some uh, pivots, top and bottom, so let's create a pivot. Uh, actually I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees, scale that up slightly, and in fact W to move, if we click on the Y direction, press and hold V and then press and gesture with the middle mouse button, it will snap to the vertex that we want. You can now duplicate that, move the duplicate down, again V snap to the location, R to scale, and then we have a very basic piston. Not very detailed, let's add a little bit more detail to the model. Um, I'm going to select the edge, select one of these here. This allows us to select the contiguous edges, and then we can just apply a bevel to that. Uh, I need to modify the offset. I've slowed my manipulators down. Um, you may find that the default manipulators are a little too fast when trying to apply offsets, so I just slow mine down so that we can apply a little bit more control when you're adding those offsets. Okay, let's add a little bit more detail to the top pivot. I'm going to select contiguous edges and apply a bevel, change the offset. And let's do the same for the bottom pivot. Let's select contiguous edges and bevel. Okay, finally just give these a name. I'll call this pivot one. And if I give this the same name, my will give it a unique name. Okay, very basic piston there. Let's bring up the Move tool, and we'll see that at the moment it's showing that the, the Move is in the uh, the Y direction is pointing straight up. Well, this is the World coordinate. If we look at the Move tool settings, we'll find that we're in World mode. If we go to Object mode, we can see that suddenly the Y is pointing up for this object. That's because we rotated this object, and when we're going to do the rigging for this, we'll need this to really point upwards. So what I'm going to do is freeze the transformations bring up the options box. We've got translate, rotate and scale. I'm going to apply that. Now that the rotations have all been frozen, if we drop back into the channel box, we'll see that all of the values have been set to zero and the scale has been set to a uniform one. Um, and if we bring up each of our objects, although they have been scaled, we can freeze those so that we know that this is the default start position that we want to work from. And it's really important for allowing us to easily understand how we're going to constrain our pivots or our, our pivots of our piston in the next stage. Okay, so let's make sure we're in world mode for moving. Now if I move this object around, we can see that what we want to do is aim this object at the bottom object, but nothing's happening yet. We're going to do this with an aim constraint. So I'm going to select the first object and select the second object, the constraint E, and we're going to because this was the second object selected, this will be the one which the constraint will be applied to. Okay, now I need to aim this bottom part to this top part. 
the aim constraints are available on the animation menu set. And we're going to press F2 to jump to that. And here's the constraints. Let's open up the options for aim. So we can see that the Y direction, positive Y, is the direction that we want to aim at. If we look at our aim constraint options, we'll see that this is the X column, the Y column, and the Z column. And currently, our aim vector is positive X. Well, that's not the direction we want. So we can change the positive X to 0, because that's not the direction. We want positive Y, so we'll change that to 1. Now we can apply the aim constraint. Notice that nothing changed on the screen, but our rotation for our bottom pivot is now constrained to the location of this top one. Uh, let's switch on wireframe on shaded, and then you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly that, first of all, it's pink, so we know it's got some constraints, and as we move this top object, the bottom object is pointing at it. In fact, if we move it sideways, it still operates functionally. There's no flipping going on either, which is uh, very important. Let's set up the same kind of constraint for the top pivot. So we select the bottom pivot. This is going to drive this top pivot, the constraint E. Again, we have a look at this. Now, positive Y is pointing up, but it's not pointing to the direction of the object we want. In fact, we need negative Y because that's pointing in the correct direction. So let's do a negative one and apply that. Now we'll notice that as we move the top Let's just select the top object. As we move the top object, it rotates to point to the bottom pivot, and the bottom pivot automatically points to the top pivot. So finally, we can select our shaft, shift select our pivot, P to parent. Select the bottom shaft, shift select the bottom pivot, P to parent. Now, as we move that pivot around, we see that we have a working piston. OK. I'll switch wireframe on shaded off. So the next phase is to think about adding a coil. Well, luckily, on the polygon shelf, we have a helix, which we can add. Let's bring that in and move that into position. And we're going to use the settings to just make sure the helix is the right size over here in the channel box. So I'm going to change the width, bring that in, and the radius of the, the wire. Something like that looks good to me. Um, it perhaps is a little high. Let's just bring that down and move that down. OK, but the spring would just fall off if it was in that position, so we need something for it to push against. So I'm just going to add a cylinder, R to bring up the scale tool, scale that up, slim it down slightly, and then move it into position so that our piston has something to push against, or the spring has something to push against. And I'm also going to add a quick bevel, F3 for polygons, select contiguous edges, edit the mesh, bevel, and then since that one is complete, let's bring up Control D to duplicate that, and I'll just bring the duplicate up here. Yeah, it's close enough. So I'm also going to smooth out the normals on this, because as you can see, it looks like it's got chiseled edges, so normals, soften those edges, you can see over here that it has an angle of 180, which really it makes the end face look a bit odd. I find an angle of more like 60 degrees works quite well. Uh, it means that the spring itself looks rounded, but the edges look nice and hard. So you can spend more time modeling your, your coil if you want to, and, and in fact the whole piston, but this will be good enough for the demonstration. OK, so now we have the first piston. Um, what I want to do is, this is at full extension and we need to create another piston or another coil that's at full compression. So I'm going to duplicate this, but I'm going to duplicate special. Because I want to access all of the controls that are available, I'm going to duplicate with the input graph, since these are the input connections. Apply that. We see that we have a duplicate exactly in the same place. It's called Polyhelix 2. So I'm going to reset my duplicate tool, close that window, and now I can use the Polyhelix 2 height controls to fully compress the spring. OK, that looks good to me, nothing too overlapping. Let's move it down into position. 